gotcha. Let's do this. Tonight on A New Breed of Golf, I'm gonna transform your shot shape, show you how to hit those high pitch shots, give you a little bit of insight in what you can do when you're in the rough, and we're also gonna teach you how to hit that golf ball when it's below your feet. Time for a transformational tip presented by Morgan Franklin. There is nothing cooler than going out on the golf course and playing with somebody that says, ah, you know what? That flags in the back left portion of the green. I think what I need to do is I need to hit a draw in here. And they go through, pretty cool looks, really neat waggle, and then they make this swing. Starts out to the right, spins back to the flag, and yeah, goes right in the target. You know what? It's time to transform your shot shape. We want to learn how to be able to draw the ball, fade the ball. How do we do that? Well, first thing you got to do is you got to start with how you're holding the club. If I want to get a little bit of a fade, I'm going to hold this so that the, the club face is just slightly open. If I want to hit a draw, I'm going to hold it so it's slightly closed. I like to make accommodations for my shot shape when the club isn't moving. So I'm going to alter the way I put my hands on this club. Really important for you to understand, it's going to start with how you grip this, all right? Now, after that, we now have to deal with ball position. And ball position is a really important thing. So if I'm going to hit a draw, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that ball back in my stance. So I'm going to grip the club with a little bit more of a, of a stronger grip so that club face is just slightly closed. Move that ball into the back of my stance right there. And now I'm going to hit this shot. And it's going to start out to the right. And then it's going to have a little bit of a draw. Greg, what I'd love for you to do is to be able to play that shot because it's not every day I'm hitting two in a row. So let's play that one again. And you can see how that starts out to the right, draws back to the flag. Yeah, baby, right in the basket. Now, the opposite is true also. If I want to hit a fade, I'm going to grip this a little bit open and then I'm going to move that ball position a little bit more forward. That's going to help incentivize this club to kind of move across the ball. So you can see there, now that ball appears as if it's, well, outside or just off of my lead foot. And now I hit that shot. Don't tell me I've done three in a row. I can't hit it that far on that cut, but that's right at my target. Let's play that one again, Greg, and let's see that one go. And you can see how that starts out to the left and it spins back to the right. We're talking about on demand. That's what we're getting. So finally, the third part of this and the really important part of this is what's going on with the lead shoulder. The lead shoulder is essential in for you being able to control this ball. And what I mean by that is this, how you move the lead shoulder. So when I want to hit a draw, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lead shoulder, I'm going to make it go up into the air and stay kind of closed. I don't want it to open up. And that's going to take the club, it's going to drop it underneath, and then with my closed grip, I'm going to be able to, that, to get that ball to turn. So let's get the grip set correctly. So my grip is on strong, my club face is closed, we call it the closed grip. Just invented that now. Now what we're going to do is make sure that with that ball position back in our stance, the lead shoulder is going to go a little bit up, which is going to let the lower body drive out underneath and let the club get under the plane. And so that's going to go up and then stay a little bit closed, which is going to throw the club head past the, the handle, which is going to turn this over. So ball position back. And you can see there that's spinning over to the left hand side. Now. We're going to work on getting that ball to fade. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to let this lead shoulder go down. Instead of up, it's going to go down. And instead of staying closed, it's going to open up. And by going down and opening, now the club is going to get out over the top of the plane, come across, and now we're going to hit a little bit of a cut. So grip it a little bit weak. So that club face is a little bit open. We're going to get that ball position a little bit more forward. And now lead shoulder is going to go down and around. And now we started out to the left and now she spins back to the right. Just what I'm trying to do. So 
What I can tell you is this, you want to be that person that has control over the golf ball. You need to make some accommodations because we've got to transform that ball flight. Our shot shape has to be on demand. And so what we're doing is, we alter the grip. That's a pre-swing fundamental. We're going to also alter ball position, which is a pre-swing fundamental. So this is something that everybody can do. Want to hit a draw? Set it up a little bit closed. Get a little bit stronger in the grip. Move that ball position back. And now the final thing and the key, the big key, get that lead shoulder doing what you want it to do. For the draw, we're going up and closed. For the fade, we're going to go down and open. And as you start to rehearse that and get comfortable with that movement, what you're going to get is you're going to get control over that golf ball and you will have transformed your shot shape. That's our transformational tip presented by Morgan Franklin. Time for a grip tip presented by Golf Pride. One of the coolest shots that you can hit on the golf course, one of the most rewarding shots that you can hit on the golf course, and one of the most challenging shots to hit on the golf course is the high pitch shot. Why is it so difficult? Well, it takes a lot of courage. You got to make a big swing and you got to only hit it a short distance. That flop, we've seen Phil Mickelson execute that shot. I'm going to teach you how to do it right now. Here's what I want you to do. We got to grip that in the fingers and we got to get the handle down. Now, what do I mean by that? When we get set up to hit that, most of you are hitting the shot with your normal grip that you hold it with, with the club coming in on an angle like this. I want that club to come into the palm on about a 90 degree angle. And the reason why is I need the handle to get low. Once that handle gets low and we let the club seek its loft, now all of a sudden I will have added loft to this. So I'm gonna get this in the fingers of the hand and I'm gonna let that handle get down just like that. Now, that shot there is gonna allow me to get it up into the air. You'll see over there the vertical launch just 34.6. I want to get this way up into the air. So what do I have to do now? I got to get a wider stance. When I get that wider stance, now what that allows me to do is it allows me to even get lower than I had before. So I start to widen up my stance. Now I'm down in here just like this. Now all of a sudden I got that ball to get up into the air. Look at that. 60 degrees of vertical launch. Finally, what we want to do we want to holster the grip. What does holster the grip mean? Holster the grip means is when this grip is running around and it moves around in a circle, it doesn't go down the line, it moves around. I want you to take that grip and I want you to put it right into the pocket. So when we come through this shot, I want this to stay really close to the hip, just like this. And when I do that, it throws the head of the golf club past the handle, which throws loft into this and it goes way up into the air. Now here's what I would tell you. Don't take this out on the golf course right away. Practice this a little bit because you're going to have some fear. You'll be intimidated to execute the shot and you're not going to swing hard enough because you're afraid that if you miss it, you're hitting a bullet and it's going all the way across the green and into the next hole. So you want to practice a little bit. Let me rewind the videotape. Get this in the fingers. Widen that stance and then holster the club right here, just right into the lead pocket. And now I hit that shot up into the air. Look at how high that ball went. I got an apex of 17 feet. So I hit it 17 feet up into the air, but look how far it traveled. It only went 19 yards, 19 yards. And I hit it straight up into the air, 17 feet. That thing launched at about 48 degrees, which was perfect. Had a ton of backspin on it, which was excellent. All that stuff is how you're going to hit that little, that little flop shot that everybody's talking about. So let me give it one more try. Let's see if I can get this thing to go even higher. And sometimes when you do this in the studio, you got to be careful because you could hit some lights, which means that flop shot gets to be a little bit more expensive. We're hitting that high thing. So we're in here low. Just like this, handles getting down, knees are getting down, everything's getting down. Wide stance like this now, over there and holster that thing right into the pocket. Okay, let's see what we can get here. There's my shot. Look at that thing. Got it up into the air there. It flew 16 yards and only rolled out to 17 and a half. A lot of speed in that club, a lot of 
trust, a lot of faith. And what I need you to do is, I need you to practice it, I told you. Remember these keys? Get out there and practice, and when you get around the greens, you're gonna find you've got another shot that's gonna help you lower those scores. And that's our grip tip, presented by Golf Pride. Time to address a problem I know you're having every time you go out on the golf course. We're proving it, presented by Titleist. And I've got a secret for you. Come here, come here. It's coming in yellow. In March, it's coming in yellow. Let's do this. All right, what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about in the rough, a problem that you have every time you get out there. I want to show you the effect that the rough has on this golf ball. I've got to create a, a baseline here. So I've got a six iron in my hands. I'm going to be hitting it out towards this target. And I want to see what our baseline numbers are. So, okay, pretty good strike there. Come on up to the front. Let's see what kind of numbers that we're looking at here. And this is really important for you to understand the baseline and then understand the effect of the rough. So we go out here, I hit that ball about 180 yards. That was pretty good. Ball speed's right around 122 and a half. So let's just say 122, 123. We start looking at backspin, we're at about 6,300. So we're gonna go 122 ball speed, 6,300 in the backspin. I've got a launch of about 18 and a half at an apex of 104. I gotta write all this down. So many times we forget stuff. I gotta make sure that we know exactly what it is. So let's write this down. Ball speed is 122. The distance, is 180. My spin is 6,300. And apex, well, we'll go apex at 104 with a launch angle of about, what did we get? About 19 degrees, 18 and a half, 19 degrees. That's my baseline there. Now, here's what I got to do. I got to bring the rough in. So we're going to bring that rough in, make this so I can hit out of some rough. Okay, now let's make sure I get this in the, in the green. Here we go. Now six iron, out of the rough. Okay. Let's go up to the front and see what we get because we're going to see a lot of different things here. Really interesting. First of all, that ball carried in the air about 167 yards and it rolled out to 176. My other ball flew about 179, rolled to 180. So obviously there's some different things. That's, what is that, about eight yards. So I've got an eight yard rollout on that. Why do I have that? Look at a couple of things. One, my, my uh, ball speed right there is 113, okay? Backspin, that dropped to 4,600. So I was at 63, down to 4,600. My launch angle went to 15 and a half, and my apex went to 66. I gotta do a little writing. And as you start to see this written down, now you're gonna see what a big difference we've got going on with this rough. So, ball speed, 113. Distance, I'm gonna go with that distance when it flew in the air, was 17, let's go 168. Then spin rate, that's at 4,600. I had an apex there of 66, and I had a launch angle of 15 and a half. So what you can see is look at these differences and how much they drop down. Everything drops down. Launch angle goes down, spin rate goes down, apex goes down, everything goes down. What happens to our golf ball? It goes down. It goes in the bunker, it goes in the water. Now, we gotta deal with this. How are we gonna deal with this? Well, when you're in the rough, first thing I want you to do, I want you to open up that club face. So when we get in here, we gotta start getting a little bit more launch, we gotta start getting a little bit more spin. So the way you're gonna do this is we're gonna take that club face and we're gonna open it up. I open up that club face just like this. And now I hit that, and when we go up into the air, let's look at a couple of things that happened. First of all, my launch angle went up 16 and a half, so I got that up into the air. Now, I got some other things I gotta do. I gotta grip down. 
Why do I want to grip down? Because in order for me to be successful out of the rough, I got to get a steeper angle of attack. And in, and in order to get a steeper angle of attack, the first thing I have to do is I got to get closer. And when I get closer, the shaft is going to be a little bit taller. So now I got to grip down. So when I grip down here and I open up the club face, now I can stand a little bit closer to this ball. What's that going to allow me to do? It's going to allow me to get a little bit more spin on this. And so now I'm going to get a little bit of a higher launch. I'm going to get a little bit of a straighter shot. And I'm going to start to get some different things to happen. My backspin number went up there. Look at the backspin number. Backspin number goes up to about 5,100. So I'm going up. I'm going in the right direction. Now we got to do one other thing. What's that? I got to steepen my angle of attack. So when I steepen the angle of attack, what does that mean I have to do? I got to get some hinge. That's what you got to do. You got to get a little bit of hinge. So we're going to take the club face, we're going to open it up. We're going to grip down on this club and now I want to hinge this club up into the air. When I hinge the club up in the air, now I'm going to be able to trap down on this ball a little bit more. So now we're in here, standing a little bit closer. Now we're going to hinge it up. And now we hit that shot. This is a really good shot. Let's take a little peek at what happened when we did all that stuff. First of all, my golf ball now flew in the air 174 and a half, call it 175. Then my ball speed goes up to 119. Remember, I want to get it up to 122. I'm trying to get this thing back to that normal number of, of say 180. 122 is the ball speed, that's at 119, not bad. Now we get in the backspin number. Look at backspin number, all of a sudden I got to 6,000. I've almost got it all back together. Launch angle goes to 16, apex goes up to 83. So if I want to get it all back together, if I really want to get it all back together, you know what you do? You go back to the bag and you pull out that five iron. So rather than hitting the six iron, you might hit the five iron. But the point is this, there are some accommodations that you have to make when you get into the rough. One of them is you got to open up that club face. You got to grip down so you can get that shaft a little bit steeper. We have to steepen the angle of attack. And the reason why we have to do that is, is that the grass is a little bit longer. There's going to be a muffle when that club comes into it. And so what we want to do is we want to try to decrease the muffle, take some of that effect out of it. And the way you're going to do that ultimately is get steeper with it. So we open up that club face. Then what we do is we take the, let me get it into the green here. So we're going to open up that club face. We're going to get a little bit closer to it, hinge our wrists and if you've got that number and it's a front flag, you've got to make sure you carry it. I want you to go to that five iron instead of the six iron. So now I'm in here doing the exact same thing, gripping down, opening up that club face. Now we're just going to hinge the wrists up into the air. Now I'm going to hit that shot. Let's see how we do. Let's see if we get closer to our number. Come over here. Boy, things got really, really close right now. Look at that. Carried that 177, it got to 180. That's what I'm trying to get to. And my ball speed, 119. So I'm right there, got right in there. I also got my launch to be about 15. Apex is about 77. Spin rate at 5,500. I'm in really good shape. So next time you get in the rough, just make these accommodations. And what you're gonna find is, is that you're gonna be successful. You're gonna have great, you're not gonna get fearful when you get in there. And you know what? you'll hit better shots. And that's proven it, presented by Title. Why do you struggle with bringing that great practice success to the golf course? It's time for a foot joy fix. So many times you hit that golf ball exactly the way you want when you're on the practice tee, but you go out to the golf course and it doesn't re represent anything that you did on the practice tee. You know why? Because you play on uneven lies. So here's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to take a little look at the ball below our feet. So many times we get set up to hit a golf shot and we have an uneven lie. In fact, you ought to expect an uneven lie when you get out onto the golf course and the most challenging uneven lie is the ball below your feet. So, courtesy of our friends at Zen Green Stage, I'm gonna get a little bit taller. That ball's gonna get a little bit farther away from me. What you can see is I start going up. I'm also getting chucked this way. My weight's getting thrown out like that. 
So now I'm losing balance. That's perfect there. So how do I get to a point where I'm able to accommodate this lie? Well, the first thing I've got to do is I've got to establish some balance. In order for me to establish balance and also accommodate that ball being a little bit farther away from my chest, I've got to get a little bit wider. And what getting wide does is it allows me to stay in balance better, but it also shrinks my body. So my sternum, which is what I'm paying attention to, can get closer to the ground or back to where it was when I'm on a level lie. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of knee flex. Now, I'm in a little bit wider stance. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to create some knee flex because we have to get down to the ball. So when I start to get set up with a little wider stance and a little bit more knee flex, now what I end up getting is I end up getting a lie that's very similar, in other words, distance of the ball to the sternum is very similar to what I have when I'm on a level lie in the range. Now, I'm gonna hit that shot. Watch what happens to this golf ball. You're gonna see a couple of things occur. One of the things that you're going to see occur is I'm going to get some side spin. So I get a, a, number of, uh, uh, a number of 149R, which means that ball's going to the right. The other thing that I get is I get a launch angle that's to the right, 3.9 degrees to the right. So I have to make an accommodation for what's going on here because I'm getting two R's and you can't play golf with two R's. In order for you to be successful, you have to have one R, one L. I have to have a ball starting left and curving to the right or a ball starting left and uh, uh, starting right and curving to the left. That's the way I'm going to be successful. I'm not playing dead straight. Well, when I have a line like this, I'm going to get some R. This ball's going to spin to the right. So what do you do? Very simple. Aim up the hill. Now, so many times people will tell you aim left or aim right. One of the most important things that you can grasp is to think about it from your aim relative to low hill or the low side of the hill or the high side of the hill. And so what I want you to do is I always want you to aim these shots up the hill. So if I'm going to aim this to this flag and I want to be successful, I'm going to aim to the left of it. Here I've got a target. It's out at about, I don't know, 175 to 180 yards. I know I'm going to get a little right and I know I'm going to start a little right. So I'm going to aim a little bit to the left. Body's going to be positioned over here. Now I'm going to do the exact same things that I did before. I'm going to widen that stance and I'm going to add some knee flex. And that's going to bring me down to the golf ball so that I'm now making a swing that's on a very similar situation to that of a level lie. And now I hit that golf ball. And now what I get is a relatively good shot. In other words, it's close to my target. It still didn't quite start to the left as much as I want, but it was close. So what does that mean? That means I got to aim a little bit more to the left, a little bit more up the hill, because I got to get that ball to start to the left of the, of the target. So now I'm going to go more up the hill. And the amount that you're going to go up the hill is going to depend on the severity of the slope. If I have a really steep angle going down, I'm aiming more up the slope. And the other thing is, you got you to pay attention to the club that you have. If I have a club with no loft, not a lot of loft, I'm going to aim more up the hill. If I have a club that has uh, more loft, now I'm going to aim less up the hill because clubs that have more loft to them tend to curve less. All right? So here we go. More up the hill. It looks like that ball's really far forward in my stance. It's not forward in my stance. It's just right where I want it relative to my aim of left. So now we go. And now I hit that shot. And now what you're going to see is, is that golf ball is going to have some curve to the right. Greg, maybe you can play that again for me if you can so we can get a look at the flight of that golf ball. And you can see how it starts out to the left and now it's curving back to the right. It's an excellent shot right there and gives me a really good chance to make that putt for, I'll call it a birdie. Now, let's look at what we see happen. First of all, I hit it the distance, the same distance. I got it about 180 yards. But pay attention to this because this is important. Now I got my horizontal launch to go six degrees to the left. That might have been a little bit more than I wanted, but I got a left start line and a right spin. One consistency with all this is I've had a right spin every single time. But as I started to aim more and more up the hill, now all of a sudden I got that ball to start to the left. Now, what does that mean? Well, what it means is the following. When you get out to go play, 
you have to expect, maybe absent of a tee shot, you have to expect your golf ball to be on an uneven lie. And what that means is, is when you're on the tee, you get to tee the ball up, which means you really get a level lie. When your ball is on the ground, expect an uneven lie. You gotta look for it when you get out there. Pay attention to the terrain. Are you walking uphill or are you walking downhill? Is it sloping to the right or sloping to the left? And you'll feel it in your legs and in your feet. Then go through these procedures when you're dealing with this ball below your feet. You gotta widen your stance, you gotta bend those knees, and you gotta aim up the hill. And when you do all that, you're gonna solve all your problems. That is a FootJoy fix.